In this video, we're going to use polygons to model the gun in the sketch provided. Starting in my top view, I'm going to create a polygon cube, and I'll start to drag it in the basic shape of the stock of the gun. And then I'll introduce a little bit of height. And now I'll return to my front view of the template, and I'll start to put it in position. Now so that I can see the template clearly inside the viewport, I'm going to go to the ghosting, which is the little interlocking white rectangles inside each viewport. And I'll start to scale this a bit. Essentially we want to rough in and the front of the gun here. Now I'll probably drag this out past the handle. And then I'll start using my polygons to extrude pieces to make the actual stock that is shown here. Going to my perspective view, returning to my object mode, I'll right click and choose face, and I'll select the face at the end of the rectangle box. I'll click on my extrude tool, returning to my front view. I'll drag out the first face, dragging it to the end of the template reference. I'll also start to move it and scale it as closely as I can get it. I'm going to my perspective view, and as I'm doing this, I'll be hitting three on the keyboard to preview it with the smooth proxy. I'm going to select the two faces at the top now. And I'm just going to dip it down a little bit thinner than the actual drawing references. Now I'll go back to my perspective view and with my edge loop tool I'll introduce an edge splitting the geometry basically in half. Once again I'll hit three on the keyboard and then one. Now I'm going to start to use the edge loop to kind of define the geometry a little bit better. I'll place one at the very far end of the stock area. And then I'll place one in the front. Now this is going to round off here. So I've placed the edge inside a bit and now I'll hit three on the keyboard. Now I'm going to select the middle edge on the top of my geometry by holding the shift key and returning to my front view. I'll pull it up a bit. And I'll do the same with the bottom. Pulling that down. Back to my object mode. And I'll move it up into position. And again I'll hit 3 on the keyboard to preview what I have this far. Now the stock has a little bit more of a nice arch in here so I'll hit 1 on the keyboard and going to my side view, I'll put another edge in, and then I'll right click and choose vertex. Selecting the top vertices, I'll pull it down a bit. I'm going to come out of the ghost so I can see the geometry itself, so I'll hit 3 on the keyboard. Now going back to the ghost, the back end of the stock and the body of the gun here is higher than where the front part of the stock is because of the barrels. We need to accommodate these changes in some capacity. I'll start by putting another edge in. And now I'm going to start to plan where I will be extruding the gun handle and then modeling the front end of it. And I'll use the edge loop tool to do that as well. I'm placing an edge on either side of the art reference here and here as well. And for the handle, I'm going to start to extrude the geometry, but I need one more edge. Now I'm going to roughen the handle. I'll start my front view and I'll right click and choose face select the two faces at the bottom 
I'll go to my perspective view and hit F. And I'll click on my extrude tool. And I'm going to center the extrude by clicking on the little blue dial that appears each time we introduce the extrude tool. I'll return to the side view. And I'll start by pulling it down, moving it into position. And now I'll scale. And the last thing I want to do before I start to introduce more geometry and exit this, I'm going to select edge. And I'll select the very bottom edge. And I'll just flatten it out a bit. It wouldn't be quite that extreme. I'll hit 3 on the keyboard to see where I am. Now I'll go back to 1 and I'll start to firm up the handle by putting an edge as close to that edge as necessary. Hitting 3 and returning to 1. And now I'll go to my side view to add a little bit more of the necessary geometry. I'll start here where it's a little bit tapered. And I'll scale that in. I think I'll move it. I turn to my perspective view to preview in the proxy mode what I have. I need to work a little bit under here to sharpen this up and then we'll introduce the trigger guard here. Going to 1, I'll get my edge loop tool and I'll put an edge up here as close as I can to the body, hitting 3. And I'll save. Now, I'm going to introduce another edge here in which to extrude the handle from. But before I do, I want this V shape to be straight across. I'm going to go to the front view. And I'll right click and choose vertex. And I'll grab the vertices here and I'll just pull them up through the entire handle. And now I'm going to introduce an edge, referencing my template. And now I'm ready to begin extruding the handle. But once again, I want that to be straight across. So I'll return to my side view. Hit W on the keyboard to get out of the edge loop. Select Vertex and level that off. I'll right click and I'll choose Face selecting the faces on the front of the handle and I'll click on the extrude tool and I'll return to the side view so that I can be a little bit more precise about this again clicking on the blue dial to change the direction of the extrude and I'll start to extrude right to where the right angle is introduced that takes us to the front of the trigger guard I'll select the blue circle to enter into the rotation. And I'm going to get the same angle as the angle I see here with this face. I'll tweak it by grabbing the vertices and refining it perhaps right here. Now I need to extrude a piece from the top of this. I'll go to my perspective view. And I'm going to get the edge loop tool and I'll click and I'll put an edge in here. At this point I'm going to taper this a bit because the trigger guard wouldn't be quite as wide as the handle. So I'll right click and choose vertex. I'll grab my vertices in the front, hitting R to scale it, and I'll taper it in. If I wanted to I could put another edge loop here and I could taper it there as well. I'm trying to be very sparing in my polygon count just in case this needs to be used as a game asset. I'll hit 3 on the keyboard to preview what I have. Return to 1 and I'll select the faces at the top and I'll click on my extrude tool and I'll pull it straight up until it goes through the geometry of the handle of the body of the gun. I'll return to my object mode. 
Now I'll go to my perspective window and I'll hit three on the keyboard to see what I have. So this needs a bit of work, some extra loops. I'm going to start to add some more detail to the handle. And I'll do that by going to the front view. Now I know that when I'm in my proxy smooth, the handle kind of falls apart here and then here as well. So I'll hit one on the keyboard and I'm going to start to introduce some edge loops to hold things together. At this point, if I wanted to, I could start refining it and tapering it as well. I'll come out of my ghost proxy and I'll return to one on the keyboard and now I'll start to model this a little bit more refined. With the back end of the gun roughed in, I'm going to start to work on the front part here where there's an opening and then a barrel shape and then the barrel of the gun itself. I'll start in my side view again and I'll go to my ghost setting. And I want to leave this piece of geometry behind. I'll be deleting these faces and these faces and then uh, I'm going to put a cylindrical shape right over this. I'll start by right clicking on my geometry, select face, and I'll get rid of the top on this one, and then maybe these two in here. And I'll hit delete, and I don't need these two. And I'm going to get the vertex at the very end here, and I'm going to level this off with the opening at the top that I just created, kind of like that. Going to my object mode, I'll hit 3 on the keyboard. Now I want to level this off a bit, so I'll do that through my side view. Going to vertex. And I'll bring this one up a bit to follow the drawing a little bit more. And I'm going to fill in these openings. Returning to my object mode, I'm going to the upper right hand corner of the interface. There's a little cube and a hammer. When I click on it, I get a toolbar below in the attributes. And I'm going to use the bridge tool. And when I select the edges I want and click on the bridge tool, it'll close that gap out for me. So I'll start down this end, choosing edge. And I'll shift select this one, and I'll click on bridge. And I'll go down the line, filling in the gaps here. We'll use the append tool to close out these triangular shapes. To get to the append tool, I'll hold down the spacebar, go into mesh tools, append polygon, and I'll just make sure it's reset. And with this, you'll see it highlights open polygon faces. Their edges become more pronounced and green. I'll click on this one, and then I'll click on this one, I'll hit return to make that face gray and seal it out. And I'll do that for each of these instances. Now once I've hit return, um, I have to go back to the tool. So I think I'll put it on the shelf to make it more accessible, holding down Command Shift. And I'll go to Mesh Tools at the top and I'll click on Append. And I can use it on these open rectangular shapes too if I want. And I'll hit 3 on the keyboard. Now I need to define this geometry a little bit more. So once again I'll turn to my edge loop tool and I'll put edges on either side of these openings. 
Now when I hit 3 on the keyboard, it holds together pretty well, and I still have to deal with here. So I'll get my edge loop tool once again, and I'll introduce an edge here. And I could go in and add some edges up in here as well. And now it's holding together pretty well. Now, I'm going to get rid of some of the edges I don't need. Uh, this is kind of excessive if I were going to use it for a game environment. What I'm going to do is just seal this off a bit, and I'll do so by first eliminating what I don't want. I'll right-click and I'll choose Edge, and I'll start to select some of these edges I know I'm not going to use again. And if I wanted to, I could start to hold the Shift key. I can start to select some of the edges along that string by double clicking. And when I do that, you can see now it's gone all the way around to the other side. Now I don't want to delete the ones that go right to this opening. So I'll hold the Shift key, getting in there as close as I can, and I'll shift on those edges to take them out of the selection. Holding down the space bar, I'll go to Edit Mesh, and I'll choose Delete Edge. Now I can't leave that dangling like that. This can't be left just open. So all I'm going to do now is go to my side view again. I'm going to turn off the template so it's a little clearer. I'm getting in as close as I can. And I'll right click and choose vertex. I'm selecting through to the other side as well. And I'll start to move them down. And then doing one side at a time. I'll select these two. Holding down my space bar, I'll go to Edit Mesh, and I'll choose Merge to Center. And now it ends there with a clean triangular shape. I'll do the same here, selecting, hitting G. Now I'll probably take a moment to go in and clean this edge right here as well and get rid of most of it. So I'm going to right click, choose Edge, and I'll select this edge, and I'll go around to the other side to the corresponding edge. Shift, double click. I'll hit 4 so I can see through to make sure it's exactly what I want. Holding down the space bar, edit mesh, delete edge or vertex. I'll right click and choose vertex and I'll select these two. And I've got my merge to center tool up here. It appears as this little round orange circle so I could have done that holding my shift command key. Okay. I'll click on it I'll go to the other side, hit G on the keyboard, and I'll save it. So it's just something that we would want to be aware of, particularly in a game environment where the polygon count has to be really um, strictly adhered to. The rest of this is very much like drawing. We would go back and refine and tweak however you might want it, but this is a pretty good start. What I did do is I went into the front here, and I made it more in keeping with the sketch by pulling this face out and then tucking these in according to the drawing. Now I'm going to make this barrel shape here and put it in. And I'll use a cylinder for that, I guess. I'll start out in the front view and I'll go to Create Polygon Cylinder. Going to my perspective view, I'll drag out the shape. I'll start to put it into position and I'd like that to be embedded in the geometry. I'll go to the top view, hitting F on the keyboard and 4. I'll line that up kind of like that. And I want to round it at either end, so I'm going to be putting an edge loop at either side. And I'm going to hit 3 on the keyboard to see what it'll look like when it's done. And it might be a little rounder in the front. I'll go back to 1. And now I'll double click on this edge and I'll move it in like that. And then I will probably run my side view to the vertexes. And I'll select these vertices here and I'll scale them so they taper in a bit. So now if I hit 3 on the keyboard, it's not quite as smooth in the back as it is in the front. Now I'll make the gun barrel. I'll return to the front view, holding down the space bar, create polygon primitives. And in my perspective view, I'll start to give it some length. I'll return to the side view. And I'll start to put it in position, maybe scale it to the thickness that might be more like the drawing. 
And I'm using a polygon with only 10 faces each. And again, that's nothing more than maintaining the polygon count if needed. I'll line it up where it should go on with the stock and the body of the gun. And if I intended to use Arnold as a render engine, I can see that it falls apart when I introduce the proxy. I'll hit one on the keyboard and I'll get the edge loop tool and I'll start by putting an edge very close to the end of the barrel and if I throw on the keyboard I can see the wire frame of the polygon I'll put in at the very end of the back there and now the barrel will hold together. Now the next thing I'd like to do is put the sight on this and I'll start by going to my side view once again I'll turn this off for a moment and I'll get my edge loop tool again and I'll put an edge loop here and I want a little bit of a piece that looks like it's been added on so I'll put another one here to define the back edge of this and it's simply another barrel and I'll scale it and I'll move it away so it doesn't buckle so if I will go to my perspective view now, I'll hit 3 on the keyboard, and it's still falling apart, so I need a little bit more with the edge loop. So right behind this new barrel, I'll get the edge loop. I'll put one here, and I'll tuck one right there as well. And when I hit 3 on the keyboard, it's starting to hold together a little bit better. I'll go back to one, and I'll put one up at the top. And if I wanted to, I could add one here as well. So I want an opening here. I'll right-click and choose Face. And I'm going to shift select just the front of the cylinder. And I'll click on my extrude tool, center it, and I'll scale it so that those new faces will give me the thickness I want for this. Now I'll hit delete on the keyboard. I'm going to hit 3, and now I have the gun I want. Now I'll put the little sight at the top of the barrel here, and I'm going to go to my top view. And I'm going to introduce a polygon cube. And I'll start by dragging a footprint for the shape I generally want. And then going to my perspective view, I'll give it some height. I'll center it over the barrel in the top view. And then I'll go to my side view and I'll start to edit it. I'll right click and choose vertex. I'll start by moving that in. And I'm going to leave it on top so it doesn't penetrate through really. If that's too big. I can always put my pivot down at the bottom of the geometry. So if I hold D, I can move the pivot. And now if I wanted to, I could scale that further. And now we have our gun.